don't know if you're going to be able to see me and frown him. And if I'm focus, in focus, this is a big room. Everybody, everybody, welcome well, coming at you from Texas Hot Rides, who so graciously is letting me use this right here photo booth. And if you're into it, dope cars, modified cars, Hellcat, you know, you name it, they have it right here. Check them out, hotrides.com. They don't even know that I'm promoting them, so they're just good friends. They're letting me use this space for me to do this video, so go ahead. Support them. If you actually see something that you want, let them know that Lugmas Wapa sent you, and uh, maybe they'll give you royal treatment of some sort. Maybe. But however, you're here to watch this video because I am finally showing you what bike I actually purchased. If you are on social media at all, any platform, uh, Instagram, Twitter, or I don't know, you uh, obviously YouTube, you're here. You know, Snapchat, all of the, all the platforms, Lugmas Wapa, on pretty much almost every single one of them, including TikTok. You've probably seen this motorcycle, maybe not and uh, I'm just about to reveal what it is so without further ado Yes, indeed. 2009 Screaming Eagle Ultra Limited. So this here started his life as a 2009 Screaming Eagle Ultra Limited or Ultra Classic CBO. There's so many like terms that <laughs> probably don't apply and I'll probably get roasted in the comment sections for it. But this here started as a 2009 uh, Screaming Eagle Ultra Classic. CBO Ultra Limited, which wouldn't be accurate. Probably Screaming Eagle Ultra Classic. Let's just stick with that. Started as a two-tone red Screaming Eagle Ultra Classic. Had a tour pack, had everything complete. And the hilarious part about this motorcycle is that we have a history. Turns out that this was one of the very first motorcycles that I shot a video of for the dealership here in Carrollton, Texas. And I was just getting started and this was uh, not my cup of tea at the time. And nor is it is, like if it was in stock form, I still probably wouldn't go for something like this. Because obviously this is not stock, it's not even the stock color, which is a two-tone red. But I shot this for the very first time years and years ago. Somehow I made it back to the dealership and the previous owner painted it black. Chopped the tour pack, got rid of all the unnecessary things that usually comes with CVOs, and here we are. Looks like a street glide. But it is a gorgeous street glide. Every single piece is chromed out, and I usually go for blacked out looks, and there's so much blacked out looks out there now that I'm just chrome is the way to go for me at this stage of my life. Maybe it's because I'm in my getting close to my mid-30s, I don't know. Or is that something that happens in your 40s? I, doesn't matter. The power plant on this is obviously a twin cam. It is a 110 Screaming Eagle twin cam. And there's just things about the 110s that I don't particularly love. Most people that don't know how to ride these motorcycles have a tendency of blowing up that motor every 20,000 miles. You're supposed to be revving these things higher than 2500 rpm or shifting way higher than 2500 rpm 2500 rpm and they blow these motors up this one particularly when i bought it had uh low 50s like 50,000 plus miles there's not a single record of this bike being in service anywhere as in to replace the power plant so we can only assume that this is the original power plant I since put a ton of miles on it and a ton is relative for how long i've owned this motorcycle they usually put 20 to 25,000 on my motorcycles at once, uh, like every year. And this one obviously hasn't hit those numbers yet. I've had some other stuff that I haven't been able to ride as much as I want. Point is, this thing has 60,000 miles, right around that range of 60,000 miles. And it's been smooth, it's been amazing. And obviously, the, I've done some changes to it since I've owned it. Uh, one of which would be headlight, uh, tinted it. I know there's gonna be like people in the comment sections you can't see at night. Uh, actually, this is looks super dark, but it's actually 
pretty decent. It does have, it's a day maker underneath that, and these uh, LED turn signals are actually pretty dang bright, and I'm eventually wanting to put a little, um, what's it called? Like a passing lamp underneath here, a little strip, like an LED bar, kind of like tucked away, hit it in there uh, for more lighting, which is kind of stupid. I do it to myself. Oh well, that's what I like. You can throw your comments in there and say how stupid that is, and it's unnecessary. Yes, I agree. If you would have seen the motorcycle that I had originally, which is an electric light standard, it was very much meant to be ridden. Like it was, like it had legend suspension. Uh, it was a hot 95 motor. It was bulletproof motor and I basically built it out to travel all the all but and I basically built it to travel anywhere I wanted uh, I haven't gotten a chance to travel as much now that I have a family and I have some other responsibilities and uh, most of my time is spent at motorcycle events and shows so I decided to do air ride on this thing and on the back I have a combination of things because I always do everything on a budget because I am not rich. I know if you did like a full dirty air system, you're talking you know, a couple thousand dollars. This right here is a, I bought a, the tubing, I bought everything separately, and I built my own kit essentially. Some of the stuff that I had laying around here at the dealership at, over at uh, Mary Carly Davidson, and we have Bill Stein, uh, or Bill Steen, however you want to say that, rear shocks, and they are very short, which when it comes to uh, riding it almost fully aired up, because if you know anything about air ride, you don't want to be fully aired up because it might as well be riding a rigid. So there has to be like some play there with, with the air suspension. There has to be a little cushion. So because of that, uh, rideability is not the greatest as if for any air ride system. In comparison to like upgraded shocks, like anything from Progressive, Fox, Owens, you name it, don't care about it. In this situation, I just wanted to look cool and eventually I want to transfer that to the front suspension which is the next on my list to do everything is hidden internally as in like the switches are on the handlebars for the air suspension I have a dirty air compressor on it my air tank is actually this right here the engine guard and it's a very simple conversion I basically tapped it right on the inside right here you can't really see it it's nice and hidden if I do front air I'll eventually have to get a air tank not that it's necessary but I would like to get an additional air tank for the front suspension which I'll probably get from dirty air as well other things I've been done to this motorcycle or basically the mirrors these are I would say repops is that what they say nowadays repop it's a it's it's a make-believe Arlen-S mirrors these are the cheap ones you can probably buy them for like 30 bucks off of eBay or Amazon. Super cheap. And they look just as good. And they're chromed out. Got a clockworks windshield, which I did not put on there. And uh, if I'm honest with you, I've never liked what these look like. They're amazing. The functionality is amazing. But this looks kind of like something that you wear to not get someone pregnant. Just like flapping in the wind, if you know what I mean. And of course, like I mentioned earlier, this thing had stock header and Benson Heinz slip-ons and now has a DND because why wouldn't you put a DND on something a two and a one and uh, a lot of people thought that I was going to turn this into a Vicla which I have mixed feelings about it I'm eventually going to replace the wheels maybe do a 21 on the front but uh, we will see we'll do a combination of something I don't know uh, this is obviously not a performance bag I would have done with something completely different on suspension but it has a DND on it and it's obnoxiously loud it has an RLS intake which it used to have a screaming eagle intake and now it has an RLS intake and I think it looks amazing clean simple I don't want anything fancy nothing swanky uh, these 12 inch bars were just super comfortable I wish they were narrower but you live with what you got and speaking of handlebars there's a potential factory 47 sponsorship happening I'll let you know if that goes through I'm not a huge fan of their meat cleaver setups like everything with big pointy things all over it not not a fan of that but I, there's rumors of a different setup that they're coming up with and I'm hoping that it comes out in time so I can replace these bars and get hopefully something narrower because these are comfortable but doing like tight turns you have like you're fully stretched and I'm about six foot so I don't have the biggest wingspan but it is I would say a little above average maybe and I still can't like it's you're still fully stretched it's not impossible it's not super uncomfortable but I would rather I like T-bars in general, 
I don't want to do T-bar setup on this because I want to cut holes and do all kinds of stuff to it, but it, you know, hopefully narrower bars is what I'm getting at. Lowers will eventually make it onto this motorcycle. It will be having speakers in the fairing. There will be upgraded with some diamond audios and or some arc audios. We're still looking into that. New amp, of course, and of course, speakers in the lowers as well. And uh, again, it will be, for the most part, functional because it is meant to be ridden. Uh, these rear shocks will be replaced hopefully by some legends that I have lying around that have significantly more travel than these tiny little bill things. There's really not much else to this motorcycle other than that uh, I enjoy riding it. Got that solo seat from Harley Davidson CVO from previous years. Uh, there's other plans I intend to do. I want to shave off the entire rear fender. I don't want, to, I don't want you to be able to see any tail lights, nothing. Probably going with Kuriakin, like mini tail lights or mini turn signals. I'm not really sure what they're called. I'll put them in this image here. And I'll be hiding them somewhere back there where you can't see it. A retractable license plate mount that I have to create for that because apparently nobody makes it, which I don't know, like, why wouldn't you make something that kind of hides inside the fender? That's plans for the future. And then, of course, replace the stereo with an aquatic AV, which is reliable. And it's not the best looking stereo, but it's reliable. It puts out good power and it's just easy to use. Oh, and the previous owner put RNS grips on it. So that's it. That's my 2009 Screaming Eagle Ultra Classic. It's what I've been riding. And uh, there's more things to come to it if someone doesn't ever offer me way more than I pay for it, because that's how it always goes. I, wanted, I was going to keep the FXR until someone offered me stupid amounts of money for it, so I sold it. Same thing happened with my electric ride. I'm hoping that this is the one that I stick with. It's the original line of Rogue Light. I always like Rogue Lights, but now they're everywhere. Like, everybody loves the Rogue Lights, so now I want this. So, yeah. That's all I got. If you like motorcycle come to go ahead and subscribe right now. Turn that notification bell on, and uh, until see you next time. Get on two wheels or on your Harley and get some wind therapy. Later.